soft fade. <laughs> that fade. Ooh. I like it. I don't know who who made that video, but it is definitely worth the money spent. You've mentioned that for the past like five episodes now, I think. Because every time it catches me off guard. <laughs> you're just used to it not happening. And then all of a sudden, boom, we're live. And it's like, oh, yeah, I remember. He's made a soft fade, and I don't remember it. But yeah, I intentionally planned that when I r rendered the video. Not I knew it. You're like, I'm going to mess with Jeff. You're you probably upload a new video every time, and you trim a second off of the intro music. Just so it happens just a little bit earlier every time. Yeah, you just got to get right to the content as quickly as we can. There you go. So... Today, I am Jeff Fuller from Fuller and Brody Works, and that is Matt Enderly from Patch Phrase, and this is Adam from BJJHats.com. Hi. And Adam, it has a, what, 30 second commercial? Ready to go. Hi. Uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, in case you don't know, I'm going to be doing a ship and stitch with Alexis Galloway. Uh -huh. And I'm going to be making the this bunny, a bunny and an egg. Now, in case you don't know what a ship and stitch is, it is where you buy the file and all the materials from Alexis. And then she... <laughs> And then she sends the materials to you, and then you make them. All right, so I'll fill in a little bit there for you guys. So you purchase the shipping stitch, and she gathers all the supplies that you're going to need for that, and she puts them all in a box and sends them to you, and along with the, the files that you get. And then she does a Zoom class uh, where you all sit in the class and you make the project together. So Adam digitized a rabbit. And a Easter egg that are in the hoop that uh, she's going to be using for the ship and stitch. Um, and so he's really excited about that. And he's going to be there in the ship and stitch along with her, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Question. Which came first, the bunny or the egg? The bunny. We made the bunny first. <laughs> so there you go. Adam digitized these files and he's been pretty excited. He's got... A million of them. We've got a little bunny for little hoops and big bunnies for big hoops and eggs of various sizes. So he's really excited for that. And that's going to be happening. I'm going to drop a link to that in the uh, chat. And then what do you do to get a discount? Uh, what's, what's the discount code? It starts with an A. And ends with them. Adam. Adam. <laughs> he's never been live on camera before. Apparently, he's a little nervous. But the uh, the discount code is Adam uh, to get you in on that. And he's really excited. He'll be in the Zoom and everything. So that's his uh, much longer than 30-second uh, commercial. Anything else? Uh, in case you're wondering why I, ha why I forgot, I have uh, short-term memory. <laughs> he's like a goldfish he's like a goldfish he can't find his way out of the glass jar is there another website you want to plug in another website we want to plug in ooh bjjhats.com yeah bjjhats.com <laughs> again I okay. have short term memory so that's that's bjjhats.com number one well I guess it's the third time we said it so What's yeah it? you know Five they say times? what 10 impressions yeah. and they'll never forget but yeah. Anyways, that's Adam from BJJHats.com. And now he's up. <laughs> he's up. Yeah. So Adam says bye. Maybe he'll come back at the end. We'll see. Um, we'll see. At least he's not playing uh, Minecraft during the live and, you know, the notifications pop up on my screen. That's not embarrassing at all. Um, but let's go ahead and grab some uh, comments here. We have Jan watching from Fort Worth, Texas. We have Daryl from Oklahoma. Hello. Cindy King from Texas as well. Hello. She says, hi, Adam. Hi. <laughs> we have Carrie. Hello from Michigan. Hello. We have uh, Bob. Hello. Uh, we have Vilma. Vimla. I'll get that right. Hello from New Zealand. Uh, we have 
Dustin, hello. And we have Mashid, hello. So today we have Jeff <laughs> from Greenville, South Carolina. Hello. That one just came in. But today we have Matt. He's going to be sewing out a patch on his embroidery machine all the way over in the camera two or three. Is it camera three? Well, let me show you what it looks like first. Uh, let me know if you see it. Uh, add to stream. There we go. So that is Matt's computer screen at the moment. Yep. I am running one monitor deep because my laptop is sitting on the table. So I don't really know what the stream looks like right now. Um, so I'm going to trust Jeff isn't doing some weird face or putting like some Snapchat, you know, doggy ear tongue thing on me. But. Can we okay. do a doggy ear pun thing on Matt? No. <laughs> I just gave you the idea. Dang it. Okay. <laughs> so this is the patch that I'm going to be running today. This is basically just a sample, uh, just seeing how my digitizing worked out. Um, pretty much digitize it the same way I do any other patch, except this one's slightly different because the border is actually, um, might look familiar. It's actually uh what one of the other guys in this live stream developed so um it's the fuller border looks like the Merrill border um uh, technically i could do this on the Merrill machine um why i would want to do it that way i don't know um so that's what we're going to do here so just testing it out it's the first time i think i've done a split uh border with the fuller border before but um yeah I think it'll be I pretty interesting i don't think i've seen it uh, I don't think I've seen you do it before. I think I might have um, helped somebody do that once, but I don't actually recall. It's, it's definitely different. But we will go ahead and remove that from stream. There we go. Matt's back on screen. And we'll pull up his machine. Go ahead. Well, we will go. I still got to transfer the file to it. but And I'm out of USB ports. So <laughs> I'm out of There you go. We'll Yay. try it. Okay. I will grab comments while we're doing that. We have Justin watching from Florida. Matt changing things. We have uh, Cindy saying, is any of the patch just fabric? I believe the black in the background is, isn't it? Yes. So I'll actually pull it back up real quick. Um, so, yeah, all of this in the center here is just base uh, black twill. And then, okay. yeah, that's it. We have Eric. Hope you guys have a good episode. Working and recuperating and thought I'd stop in and wish you folks the best. Thank you very much for watching. We have Dustin, best borders out on the market. Thank you kindly. And we have Sheila here. Hey, guys. Hello. And Matt is transferring his file to his USB drive. Cool. Somehow. It should be done. You got it? Yep. <laughs> Now we'll go ahead and add that back and I'll push a few buttons and there we go. All right. So we'll see how well this works out. Um, I don't think I've ever ran the embroidery machine on the live other than when Jeff and I tested this idea out uh, last night. Um, you should be able to hear me. If not, uh, consider yourself blessed. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can hear you. Yeah. So first things first, this machine is my original machine that I started with. It's my Recoma 12 needle. Um, it's been through a lot. Uh, there's been a lot of patches that have gone through it. Uh, it needs a tune up. There's a couple of parts that are broken it that I couldn't get replacements for. So I'm like sourcing other ones. So that's why needle 12 isn't threaded. And actually if I slide this aside, I'm pretty sure uh, there's yeah, we're just not going to look at that one. We're going to ignore that there's painter's tape holding that one together. But, um, yeah, I'm not You got some duct tape. Don't look at the duct tape. I would much rather prefer running one of my other happies. However, you definitely will not be able to hear me. So um, It's mild louder with yeah, or that one. needle bars going up and down. So this is the guy we're going to use right now. Uh, so this is a 2006 Recoma, as I said. Um, this was a floppy disk driven unit that I converted to be USB. So that's how I got the design over there. Uh, of course, I'm going to have a brain fart on how to load the design in. Um, Just because you're on camera. That, that's absolutely. I mean, that's the only time. 
So I will grab a couple of comments here. Uh, Cindy says, I keep losing you. Um, that we're, we're looking like we're solid on this end. Uh, you might try the Facebook stream because um, I see you're on YouTube. And Justin says, on the fuller border, if I have an odd shaped patch, is it possible to digitize with it? Um, and like I made it said in the comments, depending on the shape, I can make most shapes work. Um, there are some that just, they won't, uh, but most of the time I can, I can make it work. So, um, hopefully that answers your question. And now we're back. Matt saving the file is a DST. Uh, is that what it shows on the screen? Uh, no, I am. I'm taking a picture of the color sequence with my phone. <laughs> so you can enter it in. Yeah. Gotcha. But um, I so, actually need to thread it, so there's that too. Yeah, that's something that needs to happen. Uh, Dustin says, speaking of patches, if you're not using the fuller border, what kind of border would you use for a typical patch? Simple square or circle. <clears throat> um, I know before I started using it, it was just a, uh, a satin stitch. That's what I used all the time. Um I'm pretty sure that's what you used too, right, Matt? Yeah, so it was a satin stitch. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of patch or custom patches with the satin stitch. Uh, before I figured out the marrow machine, I tried not to do custom patches because um, I didn't really know what I was doing. But obviously, there's a lot th better things out there now and better education. Um, yeah, so it was always satin stitch. I still occasionally do a satin stitch, um, but... Not I mean, typically. it really depends on the shape. There are some shapes that you just can't get, so you have to do you have to use a satin stitch, especially if you're trying to get like a really narrow border. Um, you're kind of stuck. Yeah, and uh, like I mentioned before, with uh, the uh, the border and it's split yellow and blue. If I were to do marrowed, I'd be doing all one color as you see on the screen right now. So I'd probably switch to black just because. Well, yeah, that's what we typically do patch borders as. So, yeah, it doesn't look nearly as cool. marrow halfway through the patch. Yeah, I'm not. Well, I'm definitely not. I'd be doing all of them and then swapping, but I'm doing 30 of these patches. So, I'll probably be doing more just because they look cool, but the customer only ordered 30. Yeah. Um, and uh, let's see. Okay, so undo that. Um, let's see. What was I doing? Oh, I got to thread the machine. So. Yep. Uh, I will do that, and we'll go like that, and there you go. Now we can see Matt's machine. That did not work. Right. Try that again. There we go. Uh, might be because I did it, too. Oh, that could be, too. Okay, so we all know how to thread the inverter machine, so that's pretty cool. Um of course, I'm going to have a brain fart, because that's how life works. So I am going to just grab a random color and throw it up there. And uh, this is the point where if you guys have any questions about, like, materials used, uh, I have cards and stuff that I can show you exactly what you got. I guess that's me leading the viewer into asking questions. I believe that's called badgering the witness in court. Dun, dun. There, I mean, it is. Let's see. Dustin asks, off topic of patches, but what size thread are you using for very small font in your patch? 40 weight or 60 weight, man? Uh, so I actually haven't used 60 weight in any of my patches for a good couple months now. What I've found seems to work pretty well is doing 40 weight and a 0.5 density. And... Jeff has the specs on the the run and everything. So it's like one one and a half millimeter and what the heck is going on here. Center run underlay and then make sure yeah. that we get your uh your travel stitches too. Cause that's something I see a lot of is people will set their underlay at a shorter stitch length, but they won't get the travel stitch. So the underlay will go down and it'll be a nice short stitch length, but then it needs to travel back and the travel length will be a lot longer and that's usually what pops out um yeah and that's like a hidden thing in Wilcom, which i didn't know was even a thing there <laughs> it's not very straightforward but we have letty saying hi guys 
Uh, we have Barb Lafond. Hello. Justin asks, where do you get your materials? What heat bonding do you recommend? Okay. So let me put yellow in and then I can forget about where I'm at. So let me ask you what material you're using today. Right. So the material I will be using today, wow, I feel like such a politician, is uh, the, I don't remember what the actual model or like SKU is, but from uh, Fabric Wholesale Direct. Uh, mm -hmm. That's where I found it the cheapest for someone who does a lot of bulk patches. Uh, there are other places like Gun Old that you can buy some really nice premium stuff. However, it's a lot more expensive uh, because of the amount of materials that are put into it. Um, you know, I might as well just do one more real quick, and then I'm done with threading it. Right. So there are a lot of different places that you can get twill. You can get it from Fabric Wholesale Direct. You can get it from Car Textile. Old makes a twill that is made for patches and mark as well. Um, you can get poly twill from stalls. The biggest thing that I always look at is to make sure that it's polyester because you want something that you can seal the edge of after you cut it, or at least have an interfacing on there that you can seal. Um, if you're going to do like hot cut patches and you really want to make sure that you have that, uh, that polyester um, so you can get a, a clean cut on there. But um as far as heat and bond when i do iron on patches i use either it's a five mil heat seal from madeira or i use uh an old BSN product that they have um and, and matt when you're ready to start talking i'll shut up <laughs> no you can keep them okay so that's what i use for the heat seal and if i need to laminate anything then i use the uh the two mil heat seal from Madeira because that also works a little bit as a stabilizer and it works pretty nice. Um, you can also get Twill USA. Uh, they have Twill too. Um, a lot of the applique supplies pretty much are kind of the same thing. Um, so we'll go through a well as well. And Carrie says, can you give the order of steps to stack the material? Example uh, example, stabilizer, twill, etc. Um, I believe you're going to be doing that here in a little bit, right, Matt? Yep, I will be hooping it live. All right. So and hold then... all your judgments and comments until I'm floundering on the video. All right. And Carrie says, I'm trying to understand how to make patches without having a stabilizer poking out of the border after they cut around the edge. So a lot of that is going to be the materials that you use. Um, if you use like a water soluble material, then that will, uh, you can basically wash that out around the edge as long as you applique the patch down. Um, you can also use Madeira makes a heat away film that's plasticky that you can applique the material down onto as well. But any, if you don't pre-cut your shape, you're going to have a little bit of fabric sticking out the other edge. I don't think there's a lot you can do about that. You really want to make sure that you're using something that may be removed. Uh, I personally use the Weblon stabilizer, uh, is what Madeira calls it, and it's soft and sheer from Ganol. Um, but that is a nylon-based stabilizer. It melts at a little lower temperature for... Um, than polyester so it's a little bit easier to hot cut and that's just my personal preference but uh matt will be going over that a little bit more i think as he gets to it um cindy is asking how many patches will he be throwing on one hoop uh and i believe you're just doing one right matt yes this is just a sample for today yep so pre-production sample to make sure everything's good um so Matt, what Bevy Jean asks, what stabilizer are you going to be using today? Uh, so I'll probably be doing the Gunold 2085. Um, I'll show that in a second once I get my numbers entered in incorrectly. Being very quiet. I'm not yeah. saying like 1342. Oh, I don't have red on here yet. Dang it. Eight. I like how you are being quiet because you know how much of a pain this is if you get it wrong. You do. 
I remember your uh, your one patch you did, or you did the sash frame, and all the reds were the wrong red. Yes, like thirty something that. patches you did. In case you forgot, I'm reminding you. Yeah, I was only all the way like had what three patches left in the sash, and it was wrong. Yeah, that was a bad day. So but. this sucks because I have red to do, and it's literally like twenty eight stitches in red. So I gotta <laughs> find a red. Um, Dustin says, "Don't forget the red." <laughs> Just see so you get you've got the help and support of everybody watching. Don't forget the red. Uh, Carrie says, I have the plastic material, but I'm unsure how to properly use it. I like to use the heat and bond on all my patches. Is the plastic material a heat and bond? So the plastic material I'm talking about is a... Uh, I got Madeira, some here. Yeah, Madeira calls it the Madeira AS100 micron film, and I've seen it rebranded as some other stuff too. Um, but basically, it's like, it's not a heat seal. Um, it's just there as a stabilizer. Uh, and when you're done with it, you hit it with your heat press and it dissolves, uh, under the heat. So think water soluble stabilizer, but not water soluble, heat soluble. Um, and that I have a little bit of, it works pretty well. I think if you're really trying to get a nice clean, um, patch edge it works really well for that especially if you uh pre-cut your shape and then after i've embroidered the patch and taken it out and cleaned it up then i put my heat seal on the back so um i use yeah long story short i'm stalling while matt threads his red <laughs> yeah, I got I got it threaded. I was looking for the uh, the patch that I did real quick with that that with the film. film. Stuff. Yeah, but I don't see it. So, anyways, to answer the next question, which hopefully I don't make you too sick with my super awesome camera skills, we're zooming out and okay. focusing. Cool. There we go. Well, you shouldn't have been. What? Whatever. Um, okay. So let's see. So I got a couple sample sheets here um, and an Andy's mint because they are the best candy in the world. Um, I got like 300 of them for Christmas. It's amazing. Best Christmas ever. Okay. So on topic, because that's where we're supposed to be. Uh, this is gone old Twilly. Um, this stuff is what I started out with. It is slightly more expensive and by slightly, I mean a lot more. However, it is nice because this is actually what it looks like. It's just in a roll. Um, and if you really wanted to, this is all you even need to hoop to actually make a patch um, because it has the um, stabilizer laminated right onto it. Yep. So it works really well. Uh, but again, it's just it's a little too expensive for me to run in a, a significant bulk, and it's not wide enough for... Uh, my sash frame because the way I was doing it once upon a time was cutting two sections, sewing it in the middle with my sewing machine, and then putting it on the, the sash frame, which was way too much work. Uh, so that is that is the Twilly, which is, I believe, 65% polyester and 35% cotton. So yeah. uh, works real nice. And then so uh, Gunnold has some other stuff like Step which is supposed to look like it's 100% embroidered, but I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> so hold on one second, Matt. We have a question here that says, how do you guys pre-cut the shape? So if you're going to pre-cut your shapes, how do you do it? Uh, so I have a laser cutter. Uh, that works pretty well. Um, another tool you can use if I can find it. The nice thing is I can be walking around my room and you don't even know that. <laughs> um, if you're doing circles, one of the best things you can do is get one of these doodads. Just set it to your radius, and then you just run it around, and you can make circles pretty damn quick. So that's what I do. Um, works great <laughs> for circles. If you're trying to do anything else, it doesn't work very well. Um, otherwise, yeah, the laser cutter works great. Um, if you do have a sash frame, another thing that works too is 
doing uh, putting your design into your embroidery machine, hooping your twill, running the run stitch, and then uh, just cutting it on the line. And yeah, that's a little bit more work, but yeah. Or you can use something like the eye line or silhouette and cut it that way, but that's a little, little harder. Uh, this isn't actually the sheet that I want. Um, this is that Garbandine or whatever. Gabardine? Gabardine, you know, something like that. That's probably how you say it. Uh, which means I don't know where the other one is. But the nice thing is I found it. So. so for those of you that are asking what the compass thing is, I dropped a link to Amazon in it in the, in the chat. So you guys can go ahead and take a look at it from there. So this is another company that is pretty much pretty identical to uh, what Gunnel Twilly is. Uh, it's a lot cheaper, but it is just the twill. So you will have to laminate it or use some sort of stabilizer. Uh, this uh, Gabardine you can get at uh, Joanne's Fabric. You can get it in like black, white, and red sometimes, depending on how lucky you are. And it also works really well. Um, but I try to stick to polyester cotton blends because it seems to work the best for me. Okay. And then uh, Jeff and I are talking to Car Textile, and the, the, he has some of this twill from them. I'm looking at getting some in the future and trying them out. But last but not least, the... I don't know why I have this one there, but uh, so Fabric Wholesale Direct is where I'm getting like 95% of my tool from now. Um, they have plenty of different colors. You can order swatch kits like this. Uh, you do unfortunately have to pay for them, um, but this is what you get. Get a couple different colors. Um, they're not always in stock. Uh, that's the downside, but they work great. I just buy black and apparently I buy 35 yards of white too. So, um, but that works great. So this is what I'm going to be sewing on today. Um, and then we are talking about stabilizers. Did you show the web line? I did not. Okay. So this is gun old 2085. You're not going to be able to really see much about it, but it is a cutaway. I can't tear it. It just distorts. This is what I do pretty much all of my patches on. And it's actually what I've done all of my patches on. So, so that is a, just so you guys know, it's a two and a half ounce stabilizer. Okay. And then I have this over here. So this, which you can't see it because I'm still coming. This is the Weblon stabilizer. You can see that see-through. This is nylon, I believe you said. Yep, nylon base. Um, so this actually melts pretty quick. Um, so if you put your twill over it, you cut the twill. And uh, I remember hearing someone in the comments said that they have an issue with the stabilizer showing. Uh, this will suck in and pretty much disappear. It's a little bit easier to use than something like... Uh, this is that Madeira film, that 100 micron. Um, mm -hmm. It comes off. It, it'll come off a lot cleaner than this will. All right, Matt. I'm going to jump in with a couple of questions. I, I cracked my knuckles. No, uh, Cindy says, if you get from Car Textile, would you have to add some stabilizer before sewing? Uh, yes, it is a, uh, a plain backed twill, so there's nothing on there. Um, and Baby Jean says... Uh, I have twill. What is on the back of the twill? I have it and couldn't figure out what was on the back. So some twill, it either has a heat seal on the back. The Ganold Twilly, actually, it's stabilizer laminated on the back. Um, and that is, if, if it's got stabilizer laminated on it, then you just hoop it up and you can go. You don't need to use any excess stabilizer. And Shane asks, what is the best adhesive you recommend for patches when using a heat press? I got gotcha. you. Let me go grab it. Okay. So what I found the best to be is gun old BSN. Um, it is expensive, uh, but that is because it works. Um, I <laughs> brought the wrong stuff over. 
So I like uh, that. It's expensive because it works. Uh, so it comes in. This is the iron version. There's it's uh, low temperature, so you can use a household iron. Uh, it does work with the heat press. It's what I use it with. Um, I got the iron because I'm not familiar if you can use the heat press one with an iron because uh, I was doing motorcycle club patches and I wanted something that they could iron on without a heat press. So that's why I got this. And I also got this before I got my heat press. So that's actually the real reason. But ignoring that, um, if you don't want to buy that and you're only doing a couple patches, heat and bond light works really well. Uh, you can actually get this at Menard, or Menards. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know how I came up with Menards. Uh, Walmart. Um, yeah, so you can get at Walmart. Um, I actually got this from my local sewing uh, shop here in Omaha, but those work really well. Um, and then there is one other that isn't exactly the same thing. Uh, which is called Filmoplast, which is what I also wanted to mention with this other stuff. So this is Filmoplast. So what this is, it's basically a, you peel and stick it onto your twill, and it just makes it a little bit thicker. That's about it. it it's not adhesive on the other side. It's not used for iron-on. It's just basically to make your material more structured. So. All right, Matt, I'm going to ask a couple more questions so that we can get back to it. Uh, Justin asked for a link to the nylon stabilizer. I went ahead and dropped the link to that in uh, for Madeira in the comments. Uh, Shane asked, what's it called again? It is, uh, Madeira calls it Weblon and Ganold calls it Soft and Cheer. Um, but it's basically a nylon-based performance stabilizer. Uh, Dustin asked, sorry, Matt, did you say Ganold BSN is in November or BSM is in Mike? November. And I added that. And Cindy asks a really good question. Uh, how does that heat seal compare to the Coleman? So I've never used the, the Coleman. Um... Yeah, I've never used it either. The only Coleman stuff I have is literally just this swatch kit. And I can never remember which brand it is. So I actually had it right on it, Coleman and Company. Um, and actually, if you join the Discord, you'll see that in the supplies channel, there was a big mystery on where this came from. And so discovered. I, I wrote on the bag and then someone said I would lose the bag because uh, the cats would take it. So then I wrote on here that too. So, And it hasn't been lost because I never use it. <laughs> I don't like, I don't personally like this twill because it's too shiny in my opinion. Uh, other people want it for that. But um, besides I'm typically doing 100% uh, embroidered fill over it. But if I'm buying colored twill, it's because it needs to be exposed. So just so you guys know, I have put the link to the Madeira uh, Weblon as well as the Ganold BSN in the comments. So you guys can check that out if you want to. Uh, so you probably did not see that, but all I did was I have one layer of the Fabric Wholesale Direct twill which is 100% polyester, and then one layer of the gun old 2085. Uh, it was uh, 2.5 ounce, I believe. Yep. Cutaway. So, and uh, yeah, that's all I did. There's a little extra because it's scrap from one of my larger projects, but uh, we'll go ahead and slap this on the machine. Okay. We all know how to load this. Okay, needle one. Okay. So one thing I like about this machine is I can hit the emergency stop and I can move it. It doesn't actually kill power to the machine. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So I was a little confused when I... Sorry, what was it? As long as it stops it from dropping the needle. Yeah, it does. That's definitely for sure. But when I bought my butterfly... I was confused because every time I hit the uh, the emergency reset, the emergency set stop, it was uh -huh. killing the power to the machine. I'm like, that's not right. And then I realized that's how literally every other machine is, but this one. <laughs> so, um, 
yeah, so that's it. I believe I have everything all threaded up. Just check it again. Uh, one thing I want to caveat with this machine is that it does not trim nice, so it leaves tails. Um, I only use this machine for my name patches, so I only use one color, and it's fine. I'm fine with trimming two tails per name patch, but I'm not doing large production runs with 27 trims because, yeah, that adds up. So we are going to. So Cindy King says the Coleman has the non-shiny for more of just a nice twill looking fabric. Dime also has a nice patch fabric. So it's good to know. Um, Candace says my Coleman swatch kit came with a twill USA tag. That's also good to know. And Barb says I use the Coleman and Company patch heat and bond. So I have not tried that before. Yay, first third break. It just wasn't in the needle, I guess. We had a thread malfunction. <laughs> okay, you're not going to watch me do this because you're in the way. <laughs> I think we should watch you do this. Uh, no well, pressure. I don't even know where my thread thing is. Or the snips. I think we should do a giveaway of these little snips. Or do I have them all? Uh, I don't know. How many do you have? Let's say, think of a competition, or Adam can think of a competition, and I will send one out to the winner. Ooh. Since you're the one that sends everything out, I think I can send something out for once. Okay, attempt two. Okay, attempt three. <laughs> uh, existence is pain. You know, it's just because you're doing it on live. If you were not on a live, it would probably work fine. It, it might even just be because it's, uh, I don't know. There's no trim or no tie-in? There was, but <laughs> this one this one doesn't do a tie-in if it is a third break. And you oh, stop I it. got you. So I would actually have to back up, you know, the 19 stitches it did. Yeah. The other option is to hold the end of the thread so it doesn't come out of the needle. Like I was just doing. Cool. Okay, we'll let that run. Um, let me know if it gets too loud. I do realize we should have started this before I showed you all the materials. <laughs> and then showed us all the materials while it was running. That's okay, we learned for next time. So Cindy wants to know, how does Matt have a star stuffy? Uh, because I stole it from Adam when he wasn't looking. So Matt is with, within <laughs> driving distance. And he gets stuck. So I'm just making sure I'm catching up. Vimla says that it's Murphy's Law, which is why your needle kept coming unthreaded. Yeah, we'll blame it on that. So, unfortunately, with uh, Paul's residence, I'm talking too loud because I can't hear myself in my headphones. But, um, uh, I kind of thought, deep, 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 deep. okay, uh, unfortunately, because this is live, it's not like I can just edit this out and speed it up. But, um, yeah, so we're going to be watching it. So, I was all... So, Matt, we have a question here. Uh, Justin wants to know, how are you pricing these? All right. So, pricing these is, I'm going to say, it's going to depend on your setting. So, I am running eight heads for my patch run. So I can do it a little bit cheaper than what someone with just a single head can do. Um, that's kind of the, the biggest factor right there. I know that's not really answering the question, but I just feel that's one of the most important things to know right off the bat. Um, this order, I believe, let's check if I would pull it up. Uh, so I have a, a slightly sophisticated Google spreadsheet 
uh, calculator that I just put in all my parameters and it basically spits out what my actual raw material cost is going to be. And then I basically figure out how many patches they want. And then I have my total cost and then I add or multiply a profit ratio or how much I want to make off of it based off of the weight and stuff like that. Um, so getting to the point, I pretty much quoted them I think $12 for 25 or less, uh, well, $12 each for 25 or less, and $10 for 30 each or more. Um, so then they ended up going with 30 patches. Um, another factor into how I price my patches is I'm using market research. Um, so because it's a military patch, I know about how much they're going to pay. Uh, people are willing to pay a couple of fifteen dollars any more than that. So I think they're kind of paying a lot. Uh, I personally paid twelve to. I think I paid eighteen dollars for a squadron tax before. Uh, so it's just kind of knowing the market, knowing what it's worth to them. But usually, it makes pretty good margins on it if you're not counting the time that they can actually do it. I hope that answers your question. That was a lot of side jargon. I think. I think one of these days we'll do an actual live about the weather. So Michael Dunley asks the question, and the answer is yes. Um, he says, what's the best twill? How many layers of backing should I use? Who makes the best thread? What direction should I point my machine? Should I store my hoops in the direction of prevailing winds? I vote yes. Uh, actually, uh, I believe it's like Feng Shui or something is supposed to face the east. Or the head is supposed to face the east. So that's your number one rule. Uh, I think that's like a Chinese proverb or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so definitely make sure your machine head is facing east. That's the most critical part. Uh, what is the best quill? Yes. Um, how many layers of vacuum should I use? Yes. Um, How many thread breaks should we have? One. We're going to have a lot. <laughs> um, I will grab a couple of comments here. Uh, Gina says, glad to see you using a tabletop. We had better results with one. Um, I think that you get better results when you're running patches with the table. Uh, I think it just helps support the hoop and the arms because uh, that's been my experience as well. Um. Cindy says, I, Barb, I have a patch I'm doing, but I am hand cutting the shape first, like applique, then sewing wash with stabilizer and using guest order. Um, I know when I have to cut a lot of patches in shapes and I'm not using a laser, I'll generally cut like a template out of uh, cardstock or a manila envelope and I'll use that as a template to cut to kind of piece, uh, things up. Um, it goes a little bit faster. So, Matt, this is a question for you. How many stitches are in this patch logo? Uh, so this one is, um, so this one is 19,782. Uh, a lot of that is going to be the order of one thing is that, yeah, the borders are a little heavy on the stitch count, but it looks amazing. So by deleting the borders, I took out about 4,000 stitches. Um, on top of that, I am not running an underlay underneath my fills here because I found I don't really need it if I'm using black material um, or just my materials. Yeah. And Carrie asks, I'm sorry I missed, why sh the head should face the east? So that's just a joke. Uh, there's something called Feng Shui. You're, it's like better for your body if your head faces the east. So you're supposed to face the, the headboard of your head towards the east wall or something like that. I don't know why I know that, but... Uh, mine is facing west, so I guess that explains a lot of my unfortunate luck.
I don't know why, but your machine sounds like a train. Uh, it is old, that is for sure. The butterfly, like I, it, if I had the garage clean, we could have used the butterfly and it would actually be really quiet. But I don't have that fully restored. All right, any other questions? Yes, we do. Well, I guess we should talk to Okay, so we have a question. Yeah, that was just a joke. But I do have one other thing I can show. Let me figure out if I have more to demonstrate with it. So what projects are everyone else working on this week? That was definitely not good in this. Overall with it. <laughs> oh, I really like this comment, Matt. I'm, I'm, th this is how we should do it from now on. Cindy asks, Matt, is this like a cooking show where you have several patches and different steps so we can see how you finish the final patch? Uh. I mean, if you give me, like, a minute, I can find stuff and do that. <laughs> <laughs> stuff. I, I, I do like that, though. I think it would be very good. Um, Sheila says, you can also cut twill with a plotter and a sticky mat. Uh, I know, like, the, the twill, stall, twill from stalls, they send it. It has a carrier sheet, so you can cut it on a plotter, too. Um Carrie says, Pat, she's working on patches and varsity jackets. And Shane says he's working on his first patches on Saturday for a Taekwondo school. Awesome. Right. Um, let's see. Unfortunately, I just sold those patches. So the design will be different then, but who cares? No one does. Um, <laughs> Everyone. Yeah, if you care, then cool. But. There's nothing I can do about it. I mean, I guess I could marrow it right now. But let's see if this is good. Yep, figured. Thread break. It's not really a thread break. It's just pulled out of the needle. Oh, I bet you it's because my take-up lever is way too high. So Shane says he mostly does caps and polos. Um, I do a lot of those, too. I do a lot of none of them. But you should. I did, I did get the, uh, not the Mighty Hoop, but the Hoop Master thing when I bought, uh, what, I, what paid 8000 or whatever for that Hoop uh, Master. Yeah, there you go. And it came with a machine. Yeah. A free happy forehead with a, yeah. Okay. So, okay, so that's going. Jimmy says, I can always say I'm working on caps. One machine is always running caps. Life there. Um, Vimla says, I love digitizing I do as well. I need one more patch with your color border on it. I don't, I think my last one I uh, we gave to Laura when she picked up the narrow machine. Oh, I don't know okay, if I have it anymore. Um, yeah, it looks like I am SOL there. Sounds like you're hot cutting a pad. Actually, I do have one. Cindy says she loves her hoop master set. I I agree, actually. When I got my very first job to do a polo, um, it basically the job paid for the, the hoop master. So I ordered it to do the job so that I could have it uh, have an easier time hooping the uh, the garments. I I think it's well worth the money. Uh, so we've all seen a garden machine run before. Um, I'm gonna take this away. Both sides. Thank you, guys. There's you guys. So Carrie says, "Wait, what? Did you sell your Merrill machine?" Uh, I have two of them. Uh, I picked up another one locally, and was gonna use it for something else, and then just ended up uh, selling it. So he but, still has his existing Merrill and. He just sold his spare. Yeah. Backup machine. My spare now machine. Okay, let me try to get this overhead a little bit. 
for other reasons. But we'll see until I knock the camera over and just, you'll get to hear me try on. I guess now the downside is it's just kind of out of focus. But. Okay, cool. Welcome to my cooking show. So you just get to see my hands. You don't get to see me like you would on Rachel Ray or cooking with, uh, I don't know, I don't know cooking shows. So here we are. In our bowl, we're going to mix together our quill and our 2085, about one cup of each. And uh, that'll work. Um, if you're having issues with it coming out a little too thick or thin, you can just go ahead and add yourself um, some adhesive spray. Not too much because otherwise you can't take it out. It's kind of like water when you're making cake. Um, you can tell I don't bake. Um, so yeah, this is this is what I'll use if I'm trying to adhere my fill to my. Um, stabilizer when I'm doing my big testing. Um, I am being told to take a minute to show you there's a doggo in the window over there. Uh, he really wants to come in here, but he is not going to. Um, so, um, you already saw me hoop that. Pretty cool, pretty fancy. Kind of like a KitchenAid mixer. Everyone's got one. You use it once a year and your cabinet fucking does. Um, so once you do that, I embroider it, and then out come um, something like this. This is all my patches. Um, these ones I just cut with standard scissors because they're straight edges and it's really easy. So this is 100% filled. Um, and then I take Velcro. I use Super 77, which you can get at like any home improvement store. Um, and then, yeah, it's this stuff. I just buy the big can because I use a lot of it. Uh, yeah, it's not good for huffing, it hurts. But, um, yeah, put this on the Velcro. I put it in my heat press uh, sometimes, but I don't actually heat it up. I just use the heat press to actually apply pressure. Um, and then I can cut out the Velcro and narrow it. And this is what the actual marrow does, is it puts the border over it. Um, let's see if I can go ahead and find the focus button. There you go. Sweet. It's almost like I know how to do videography. Um, All right. So I'm going to interrupt you one second here, Matt. We have a question. So, Matt, are you sponsored by Ganoli? Um, I don't know if we're technically sponsored. We do have a ordinary discount code. Um, that if you do put it into the their website in the comments, you get, I think, 10% off your order. Um, but, uh, yeah, we don't get a kickback from it. We just get the same deal along with you. Yeah, so and I, I believe that that's only on patch yeah. supplies, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, it's the stabilizer and the quill, I believe and maybe step. All I know is if you put in, if you order a bunch of thread and the stabilizer and stuff and you put EMB nerd into the comments, um, they'll price it accordingly. But they'll do it after an issue you will respond. It's not live. It's not at checkout. Um, so. All right. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions here. Uh, Baby Jean says, so do you adhere your backing before you hoop them in the hoop then? Not always. If I am doing it in a small hoop um, or a, like a 30 by 30 or whatever it is, 12 by 12, I will not likely um, adhere it. But if I'm using a cast frame, which is like, I don't know, almost five foot by two foot, then yes, I will do it just to prevent a little bit of shifting in the middle of it. All right, so I'm going to hit a couple more questions here. Um, Cindy asks, why do you marrow when the border seems so much faster in the embroidery machine? Uh, uh, so, about that. It's actually the opposite. Um, this border, uh, so this is actually the forward border. This is the only patch that I have with the forward border that's not all the way cut out. Um, I don't know how long this actually took. I don't remember the, the, the number, but it's probably over a minute 
or two minutes even. It takes yeah, a while. I'd say like three to four, to be honest with you. It, it takes a while. Um, and for me to do a circular patch, the same thing. Um, and actually, I can demonstrate it. Uh, if I find one. Here we go. The nice thing with having this camera on a tripod is I can just shove it wherever I can fit it in here. So uh, let me obviously bring you over to the marrow machine. Okay. Marrow machine. Sweetness. Um, is that too bright? Uh. Let's see. Wrong way. Or I could just turn this light off. That would help. There we go. Okay, much better. Oh, yeah. So I have this patch right here. This is a three and a half inch patch. And I'm going to mirror the border. And actually. This is real speed. And lots of practice. And done. It's done. So that's how much faster it goes. It's not going to be perfect because the patch is really thin. It's a different, but uh, yeah, it makes it wrong for that one. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's why I like the mirror machine better. Uh, but this cat or his border files, I mean, I don't really want to plug them in as much, but it allows me to do non chambered colors a lot. And uh, my lovely wife is trying to be distracting, uh, which obviously works. Um, so hang on, Matt. I'm going to stop you. Cindy says, I love that machine, but then you have to burn the tails. Uh, mark. Yes. Uh, well, there's other ways to do it. Um, so, yes, uh, burning the tails does suck. At least that's how I do it. You can use, like, the thread, um, that thread glue, like, fabric or fray stop, whatever it is. And you can, yeah, you can put that on there. I don't have any of that. So I just burn it, um, just like that, get it lit, shake it, and then I tap it down. And now it's sealed, and that's it. And you also can do the Velcro at the same time with that. I can. All right, so I have another thread to break, so I'm going to go fix that real quick. And Cindy says, I guess you were adding heat seal. You don't have to. No, if you were going to add heat seal on the back, you could just heat seal that tail down and you'd be okay. Yes, I have done it that way before. Um, one thing to know is that if you're going to heat seal it before you marrow it, you need to remove the backing because otherwise you're not going to get it off. And that sucks when you do 30 patches that way and realize you screwed up. <laughs> I so, have never done that before. Zimmer says it's like an overlocker. That's exactly what it is. It's an overlocker. It's just something about how they construct it that gives you that very nice patch order. And Matt, you're back? Yep, I'm back. Okay, I'll be quiet. All right. So, uh, so that was the demonstration of the speed of the marrow, which is why it's a lot nicer. Um, and yeah, it makes it a lot more professional. The military standard. Um, so that's how I go from, so this is actually one of the patches. Uh, it has Velcro on the back of it with 677. You see it, it's on there. Um, however, it will not survive me putting it on something and pulling it off, which is why you either stitch it on or I would be putting the border on it. I just can do the border. I, All right, Matt, we have a couple of marrow questions. So Cindy asked, in your marrowing machine, what kind of thread do you use? Okay, um, let me go back over there. This is like we're going professional here. I know, so, I feel like I should have driven down so you could have a cameraman. Yeah, I mean, maybe next time. 
Um, so that's it. It is seven tools of standard embroidery thread. So this is just gone old 40 weight uh, thread. And that's it. Now, you may be asking, Matt, I have seen other types of thread being used on merit machines before. What is that? And I will say, I don't like to use that stuff. So it is underneath my desk. Um, and that is the answer you were looking for, I am absolutely sure. So, moving on to the next question. Um, oh. This is this is the thread that we use for the overlocking edge. This is considered 300 slash four. It's uh, like four strands or something. I don't know what the code actually means. Um, then this is X40, which uh, that did not sound good, but we're going to ignore that. Uh, text 40, which is what we use on one of the loopers, and it's text 45. Actually, this is what's used in the lower loopers. So this is a heavier weight, a lot stronger. I believe it's nylon. Um, yeah, 60 ounce NWP, whatever that means. Um, and then, yeah, so this is text 40. So this is what we use in the needle, if you're using white. All but, right like doing that stuff so candace asks if i understood correctly don't you have to have a modification to marrow the velcro um i there is a velcro addition or modification you can do i don't know if it's necessarily quite required i don't have you tried doing it with your no, i, I have not yeah this patch is dead She dead, Jim. Uh oh, it dehooped. Yeah. Why? Well, I think it, the threads. Yeah. It. The. Uh, of course, it was the red. Because <laughs> the red is the one that's actually underneath. That's uh. Yeah. Bird nested. Uh oh, yeah. that is a bird nest. So uh, we're gonna call that one a fail. Um, good thing we can declare that in our taxes, am I right? <laughs> you have to call it an epic fail. Yeah, so that one is done. Um, but so far, it looks good. So, uh, Barb says, do you ever sew patches on caps? Um, I've done a post-bed machine. I don't think you've ever done that, have you, Matt? I have not. So, when you come next time, we'll do that. Uh, Cindy says, OMG, the cake fell. Yep. And Vinla says, ah, so, so close. Yeah, I was at 14,000 stitches, so, um, let's see. And what Cindy actually? says, only during a live will that happen. Yeah, so it was actually because of my picker. My picker got caught by the red thread and, uh, it didn't like that. Let's see. Okay, so I don't think I finished uh, cooking patches with uh, me before. Or yeah, so. Otherwise, I'll just show this. So it actually looks pretty good. The text is usually my main concern. Uh, the Javelin missile turned out. Uh, so the only thing left was actually the, uh, oh, I forgot the tank is red. So there's actually quite a bit of red. Um, but yeah, I have no doubt that this would have turned out fine. So, um, I do want to say, uh, one more thing with the floor border is, so that's what this one is. Um, it allows you to do some weird, crazy designs. So like this one, the border, this marrow border is going underneath the Santa hat. Um, and I did not have to remove it from the sh machine to do that, which I would have had to have done with the mirror machine. So this was all done in the hoop. And then it actually has gone old BSN on the back of it. But uh, that was because they were wanting to do that, and then they did. So I have like five of them left. Um, here's a different type of material. This is the Air Force and Army OCP material. Same principle as always. It's just regular twill, but it's just 
a dyed pattern. And then this is what it looks like when it comes off my sash. And then I just cut out the three, put it in my laser, and cut it that way. Or you just cut it with scissors. But um, unfortunately, since that obviously failed, um, that kind of sucks. But but that's how it goes in embroidery. Sometimes it works and sometimes yeah. it doesn't. And you adapt and overcome. I mean, let's be real. It shows that even, I mean, I don't like calling myself a professional. Um, I, I would just say I have experience, but it shows that with any experience level, you do have failures. So uh, yeah. that is, that is a failure on the machine. I know that because occasionally the picker will get caught. It doesn't retract it. And then when the thread starts, it grabs it. And then it does that all the time. So, which is why I don't use that one for production. It's kind of my backup to my backup. But, yeah. So, so that, Cindy asks, does the marrow trim too like a serger? Uh, the marrow does not. I'm going to go ahead and pull my camera off. There's, there's I know point. that you can use a, uh, that they have a knife set that goes on it, and I have a knife set for mine, and I've tried it, but uh, I'm not... I'm not a huge fan of it. I, I think it's better to trim it and then do it, especially on like round shapes and stuff. Cause it yeah. trims it a little bit ahead of where you're actually sewing. So if you're trying to do something round, the, the cut's not going to be accurate. Yeah. And especially if you're trying to do some really non-standard shapes, like I got um, this one here that I did, uh, you have to get into that corner with the mirror, which is incredibly difficult to do. Hated doing that one. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess one thing I did want to show was uh, solo layout. Uh, let me bring this back over here to my office. So Cindy once again asks, so you have to cut it nicely before you marrow? Um, I believe you just cut it out with scissors, right? So when, if I'm doing Velcro, there's a cheat you can do. Um, if I'm doing this patch, as long as the outermost diameter is circular you're good so i can cut this one as jagged as i want um because my velcro i have i use my laser to cut it up so i have just stacks and stacks of velcro coins pretty much these are just three and a half inch circles and yeah i just take that and then it just fits on the back of the patch like perfectly so the marrow will follow the velcro then instead of a jagged patch so it's a lot more forgiving, um, but I cut all of my patches on a sheet like this with the laser, just because they're all uniform and it goes so much faster than me sitting there cutting and yeah. But what Jeff was saying about the Weblon material is that you can heat it up and it will disappear. I do not have a patch that I can show that had that in it, unfortunately. But what I found works a lot better than using a Bic lighter because I've gone through a lot of these. Uh, I feel like I'm a smoker when I go buy them because I buy multi multiple packs and I've never smoked before. Um, it's a, kind of a waste. But, uh, so someone in the Discord posted that they have a alcohol, uh, a dentist alcohol lamp which is what this is. I got it off Amazon for a couple bucks. Uh, just filled it with denatured alcohol. And there you go. I get a light. And then I can just take the patch. Um, so like this one here, if it's a little frayed, I can just run it along. Probably do the side that's not the Velcro. And it's a lot easier. And that's it. Plus your hand is free. So I recommend we can put a link in the description. Yep. I just dropped that in. Sweet. Good job. So <laughs> um, let me try and catch. I want to make sure I get all the comments uh, and questions. So Carrie asks, what time and temp do you apply the Gnolds heat and bond at? And do you peel the paper off the back when it's cooled down or still hot? I know personally I apply it. Um, they have a PDF that you can download for it. I want to say it's 275 for five seconds. Uh, and I do not peel the paper off. Uh, I just leave it there. Um, and 
Uh, Matt did mention that he cuts uh, with the laser. Usually he cuts his uh, Velcro with that, right, Matt? Yes, that is correct. All right. And sometimes if you're cutting like pre-patching uh, before you marrow it, you can also cut it on the laser. I like to cut on my laser just because it's faster than me figuring it out. Um, so let's go back here. Uh, Bevy Jean says, so what does your laser look like and the price? Um, you have a K40? Yes, it's just a cheap K40 laser that I got off Amazon. Uh, follow me over here. <laughs> um, if you go he, back in our lives, you can see the time that he had a, something start on fire in there. Yes, I had a small fire uh, on the live. Um, I believe we have a short link for it. Um, let me go ahead and shove that over. Do I... I'm going to run out of USB cord, it looks like. but We might, but we are 12 minutes past the hour, Matt. So yeah, well, People have questions, so they got to be answered. Don't you know that? I know. Um, so yeah, laser, simple. I have a sacrificial bed, which is just MDF, that I can staple my templates down to. A uh, slot for the Velcro. I can just pull it through, clip over here, and then I can send the design, which I have... Like, here's a sample of what I did. I cut the Velcro out that way. And then, um, yep. And then I just use cardstock to make a template. So for this one, I just did a, um, this is actually two patches in one. But, yeah, I just basically line the patch up inside of this window when it's down there. And then I have my mouse, and I just click uh, cut, and it cuts it. You can see all the cuts. So it does have to be vented outside because it is super stinky. Um, it is also probably very toxic, but I have tried here. So thanks for paying for that, I guess. And then uh, best investment ever is a um, fire extinguisher. <laughs> Only you can prevent house fires. There you go. And uh, I think... I was trying to see if I had another patch that's like ready to be burnt, but I don't. So uh, let me just go ahead and uh, bring this back over to the table. Okay. Let's see. Uh, you said we're 12 minutes over? Yep, roughly. Okay, well, um, do we have any other questions? Oh, I guess I didn't say uh, the price of the laser. So that laser I actually got off of Amazon, even Amazon Prime. Uh, it was 400 bucks. I got it. It was not calibrated. Took me a little while to figure that out because it's, yeah, support doesn't exist. So you're relying on random strangers on the internet. Um, it is not safe because it's not grounded. So that's one of the things you have to do is unbolt it and grind off the paint and ground it. And then some upgrades. So it's probably about like 500, 550 into it. Um, oh, and then I guess I updated the electronics in it. So that was another like 300, but you don't have to. But gotcha. Do you have comments pulled up, Matt? Uh, I can see them. Okay. I just want to make sure that I think we've caught everything. Um, if we haven't caught your question, uh, make sure you can, you can go ahead and post that in the Embroidery Nerd group uh, and ask there. Uh, you'll not only get our answers, but you'll get answers from the community members as well. Um, if you like to do Discord, I highly recommend going to the Embroidery Nerd Discord. Uh, Matt went ahead and threw the link up there. Um, it's We definitely chat on that. Uh, <laughs> that is the link to our YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please make sure that you do. Uh, it helps us in every way. So, yeah. uh, just, I got distracted by comments. <laughs> so that's our Facebook page, right? Yep. Yep. So yeah, that, and you can give us a like, or you can join us on our group. Um, if you're not in there already, um, it's a lot nice. A make, lot of nice. Make sure when you request to join the group that you answer all four questions. If you don't answer all four questions, we won't let you in. That's how we screen. Um, so if you have previously applied to be in the group and you have not been let in, 
uh, you can always reapply and make sure you answer all four questions. So there's one more uh, thing on the agenda today is, um, did we ever figure out who's going to get one of these? It will be the first comment on the post of your successful patch so out. Uh, so that'll don't, happen. Don't do me dirty like that. Oh, to be announced. I'll post the picture. Don't you worry. I know. A Adam, that was his suggestion. <laughs> and oh, I was, was like, it oh, before that'll work. It failed? Huh? Was it before it failed? Yeah, it was. Okay, well, I'll still post it. Awesome. So that way you guys can see it. Um, but with that, that's everything I have, Matt. You? Uh, I don't think we have anything. I don't think there's any shows going on, right? Other than uh, the ship and stitch? There's GPX going on right now in Irving, Texas. And by right now, I mean right now. Um, Adam, again, has his ship and stitch coming up. <laughs> Where they will be making Easter eggs and or rabbit plushes in the hoop. Um, there is a link to that at the beginning of the video. Uh, he'll be doing that with Alexis Galloway. He digitized the files and uh, Alexis will be conducting the class on that. If you sign up for it, you get all of the materials for that um, that you can uh, that that you can use to sew it out, as well as the class. It is a live class on Zoom, so you can ask, stop and ask questions if you have them. Um, I think I covered all of that, didn't I? Yeah, oh, at the beginning. What's the discount code? Adam. The discount code is Adam. That will be a little bit off. So uh, there's a website Adam wants us to go visit too, isn't there? Yeah, what's what's the website? I always forget. Uh, BJJHats.com. <laughs> Good. There you go, BJJ. Learning. So that's the ship and stitch. <laughs> so that's the ship and stitch that he's got. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much everything that we have coming up. So uh, that is Matt Enderly from Patch Phrase. This is Adam Fuller from BJJHats.com. And I'm Jeff Fuller from Fuller Embroidery Works, and we are all here representing Embroidery Nerd. Thank you, guys, and have a great night. See you later.